Hello, dear people. It's Wednesday, January 5th. We're five days into the year 2022. Is that not amazing? Uh, it's the 12th day of Christmas and tomorrow is Epiphany. Uh, I am uh, and others are preparing for our College of Bishops, which starts next Monday, uh, January 10th. Uh, appreciate prayer for us as we, of course, there's the cross border there and back. Uh, and it's in the midst of a time of, of uh, unprecedented spread of COVID. So for protection and uh, uh, minimal stress in terms of testing and all those things would be appreciated. And of course, uh, for us as Canadians, the, and ANIC, the, uh, the we are looking forward to next Wednesday, January 12th, when there will be uh, the time in the College of Bishops, uh, in a consecrated space, in a church, where two candidates, one of them being our own coadjutor, Bishop-elect Dan Gifford, will, uh, there is the uh, time of the confirmation of those elections. So pray for Bishop-elect Dan and uh, for the College of Bishops. Lord willing, uh, that's where we'll be uh, next week. Uh, and we are trusting the Lord and walking with him step by step. Um, somehow, just saying Happy New Year, uh, and in these days, doesn't seem to uh, to cut it. It's sort of a cheery Happy New Year because it is such unusual time, and yet our trust is firmly in the Lord, and He has kept us all these days, and He's going to continue. I was reminded of the uh, mini Louise Haskins poem that King George the Sixth uh, quoted uh, at his Christmas Day uh, radio broadcast. Um, and uh, I'm just going to read it here. And George, King George VI read this, uh, and it says, And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the ear, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went, and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night, and, and he led me towards the hills and the breaking of day in the lone east. That's many Louise Haskins and King George VI poem that he read in the 1939, you know, of course, the beginning of the Second World War. Well, uh, it is a battle that we're in and our trust is completely in the Lord and that's a safe place to be. Well, uh, we are uh, thinking about this 12th day of Christmas, thinking about the birth of Jesus, that God, uh, the eternal Son of God, entered this world and became a man, and thus l uh, made clear God's intention not to leave us as people uh, to our own devices and ultimately to judgment and hell, but in fact to save us. And uh, thus, by his birth, he elevated humanity. And so the, the collect for the second Sunday of Christmas goes this way. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, that your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. And so we're thinking about, about this God elevating us by virtue of the very Son of God entering and becoming a man for eternity. 100% God, 100% man. It's, a, it's an incredible thing. Uh, and it also makes clear, as with the Great Commission, that uh, he has called us not only to a high calling to not only be forgiven, but to become like him, but in fact, to, to enter in as a people uh, to the work which he has for this world that he loves. Um, I was thinking about, so the people, we're not called in isolation. We're not a bunch of individuals. We're called to be a people, the church. Ephesians 4 says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the high calling. 
that we, the church, are called to. Uh, and more than simply to become like Jesus, we are called uh, in the Great Commission to declare the greatness of God to a dark world that needs to hear about Jesus so they can be saved. First Peter 2 says, And you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's First Peter 2, 9 and 10 called to be a people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and to declare to the world the greatness of the Lord, your God reigns, and to experience so that they can experience his salvation too and be with him for all eternity. The thing, and therefore it makes sense uh, that we as, as a diocese are about building biblically faithful, gospel-sharing Anglican churches across Canada and even in New England. Uh, and so uh, the planting of churches uh, is, is, is the obvious means through which God uh, calls uh, there to be mission outposts all across the world so that people hear the gospel. I was thinking about Acts 19 where Paul in Ephesus in the planting of a church, as it says, and he entered the synagogue and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Through that outpost of Ephesus in the hall of Tyrannus, the gospel having been, a church having been planted, it meant that in fact, the gospel went out to the whole of, of the area of Asia. What an incredible strategy the Lord has. And so you and I, friends in Christ, are called uh, to be about being the church and building the church uh, as he who is the only cornerstone on Jesus uh, and to declare the goodness and greatness of God as we plant churches. That's why it's our fifth priority. And so I'm going to end with the collect for Epiphany, which is tomorrow. Uh, let's pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, what a high calling we have. The Son of God became a man, and he calls us to be a people, to declare his greatness to the world. Search the scriptures daily, and every opportunity you have, open your mouth and speak to people about the Lord Jesus. Happy New Year.